Hi, Bill Kasky here, author of Same Game New Rules and host of the upcoming webinar, How to Determine Client Motive. In this video, I'm going to share with you three of the big reasons people buy, and I'm also going to share with you a mistake that a lot of salespeople make, and it has four elements to it. So hopefully at the end of this video, whether you attend the webinar coming up on Friday or not, at least you'll be attuned to what we're going to be doing in it and pull out a couple of things and go practice them over the next couple of days. We have a program that we work on elite training. We use athletic models and performance models and we say, okay, what do those people do? What do the best of the best do and how can we learn from that? And one of the seven elements that we've identified is they study the game. Actors study the craft of acting. Uh, performers of any kind study their game, study the stage, study the music, whatever it is they're involved with and at the top of their game around. Well, salespeople should do the same thing. You should study your game. And I can't think of any more important area of study than why is it people buy. It gets back to human nature. Let's talk about these three reasons. Number one is people buy to avoid, and what are they avoiding? They're avoiding pain. They're avoiding a problem that's coming up in the future in their life. It's the way a lot of insurance policies are sold. We want to, you want to buy today to avoid the future pain of when you, something happens to you, your family is left uh, uh, broke. So avoiding a pain is a real critical part of your sales process. You should understand what kinds of pains and problems and scenarios and circumstances your prospect's trying to avoid by buying from you. Step number two, big reason number two, is they buy to relieve a current problem or pain. There's something that's happening to them right now in the present, and they are looking to alleviate it, to get rid of it. And they, if your product or solution actually does that, this pays you a lot of money. Relieving of a current problem pays you a lot of money. In the first video, we talked about how to get to that problem. And we're going to spend a lot more time on the webinar giving you some tactics and strategies. And the third is pursuit. People buy when you can help them pursue, I'll say, possibilities possibilities, market opportunities, money, new customers. So when your product or solution has a pursuit factor to it, and usually typically that's something like I'm, I'm trying to earn more profit, I'm pursuing more profit, I'm pursuing more clients, I'm pursuing better ways of doing things. The nice thing is if you can wrap all these together, so there's an avoidance factor, there's a relief factor, and there's a pursuit factor to all of the problems you solve. Now, one thing I would recommend is you get a piece of paper out and you start to write down in three columns what kinds of problems do you help your customer avoid, what kinds of problems do you help them relieve, and what kinds of possibilities or opportunities do you help them pursue. That gives you a, a line listing and a checklist so that when you're in front of prospects or crafting message or email messages, you can do, uh, that will help you inform that. So the question then becomes, okay, what's the big mistake? I don't know what mistake this guy made, but I have a feeling that he made one of the four that I'm about ready to give you. Mistake number one is we don't understand what we're up against. You are up against, as a sales professional today, this little thing called human nature. Human nature, the human nature of buyers. And you should never transgress human nature. You have to allow human nature, the human nature of the prospect, to work for you, not against you. So what are some human nature elements? Number one, fear. Prospects are afraid. They might be afraid to take a chance. They might be afraid to change. They might be afraid of their manager. If they come in and say, look, I'd like to buy this million and a half dollar solution, their manager is going to say, what are you, out of your gourd? What are you talking about? So they fear. You've got to help them get past the fear. Number two is they suffer from, from a lack of expansion. They aren't good at expanding their thinking. And if your product or solution is going to force someone to have to expand their thinking about reality and about their market and about their business, that's very hard. You have an uphill battle ahead of you. But if you don't know what you're up against, then you're never even going to be able to position yourself that way. So one of the things they do is they lack that possibility for expansion. Another one, status quo. Now this goes along a little bit with this lack of expansion, but a lot of times people are just in the status quo mindset. I'm sure you've seen it. You've presented a proposal that solves an enormous problem, and it's not, it's not very expensive compared to the significance of the problem, and people don't do anything. People just say, ah, you know what, that's good, sir, but I'm just going to think I'm going to live with my current problems. People are okay living with their current problems. Many times, they would rather live in their current state of, of circumstances than they would get out of it because they think the cost or the threshold is too broad, too wide to jump. 
So one of the things you're up against human nature is people love the status quo. People love to not change. We all talk about how, oh, no, we want to change. But if you're in there pitching a large, significant deal, you're going to run up against this as what we call a phantom competitor status quo. And the final one is what I'll call, and this is my name for it, a foggy sink. A foggy syn a synchronization to their vision. So you're in there talking about a product or a solution, and they're talking about a pain. They sometimes can't figure out how this pain is going to help their company get to its vision. And a lot of times, if you're calling too low in the organization, that's the problem. A person who's head of purchasing maybe doesn't have the vision that a CEO does, probably not. Nothing against purchasing people, but they don't have the same perspective as a CEO. That's why we always say, call at the level that has the vision and help them see that your product or solution will help them get there. So they don't have a clear understanding of the vision and they can't see how your product or solution really fits into that. So what I want you to think about is make a list of these things as I said. Start to make a checklist here. Are you battling these things? Do you feel these things in your sales cycle? And join us for the webinar on April 25th where we talk about how to determine client motive. We'll talk a lot more about why, why people buy and what you can do to set the stage for a more compelled and motivated prospect. See you then.